from the legendary Sweetwater Music Hall in Mill Valley, California. Welcome to Cocktails with Bright Antenna Records. This week's guest, In the Valley Below. I am Tiffany DeBartolo from Bright Antenna Records, and today we are having a conversation with In the Valley Below. It looks like we're going to make some cocktails before we start talking, which yes. could lead to some really exciting uh, conversations. Um, I think that we're going to talk a lot today about art and life and love and music and all those fun things. All right. Let's get to it. What are you making? Just a glass of ice. <laughs> Perfect. That's what we drink. <laughs> Is this um, a pre-show cocktail? Pre-show, yes. post-show, during show. Pretty much <laughs> all the time on tour. It's uh, Jameson and ginger ale. Yum. Mm -hmm. And we like to use good quality ginger ale when we can. Uh, this is fever tree made with natural ginger. Fever tree. Three cocktails? Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Lots of times we share drinks, but we have three glasses this time. Actually, every time we share drinks, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Sidebar, for those of you just listening, Jeffrey is now pouring a healthy, unmeasured dose of Jameson whiskey over ice, followed by a very happy splash of fancy ginger ale. Now back to the program. So, wow. okay. speaking of sharing drinks, <laughs> in case people don't know, you are a band, and you're also a couple. Yeah, well, usually we are. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you were artists before, um, you were independently artists before you met, um, and now you work together. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about what it's like um, to work as a couple and how that might be different from um, working solo? At first it was it was awkward because <clears throat> writing songs and putting your feelings is very intimate and it's embarrassing. Although it shouldn't be, but when you're starting out it, it is. And so when we first started writing together it was it was awkward and we wrote bad songs. Well I feel like also when you're really into someone, maybe this is just me, but when I'm really excited or or nervous about being with someone or new, I write a lot about them. So how does that work when you're writing together? When we first started writing together, we weren't uh, a couple oh. or we were just friends. And maybe that's why it was awkward. I guess as soon as we started sleeping together, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> Advice to anyone trying to collaborate. Yeah. Just have sex, yeah. just have sex, yeah. just have sex. And yeah, that's all you need to do. <laughs> and drink cocktails. Oh yeah, here, yeah. let's have a... Oh, let's toast. <laughs> to, to art, music, art, music and... and Luck. Couples. Yeah, couples. <laughs> oh, yes. Make sure you get the slurping sound in the microphone. We are interrupting this podcast for a mini podcast within a podcast. And today we're sitting with Brian Antenna recording artist in the valley below. My name is Braden Merrick. I'm the president of the label. <laughs> well, since our last podcast we did over at the Sweetwater, we've had some amazing updates that have come to the table um you know the record is in the can and to accompany the record the pink chateau you guys have made a film called the pink chateau um tell us a little bit about that movie <laughs> <laughs> well it was um instead of making separate little videos we came up with the idea and the label to um, make one big feature film music video. And it slowly evolved. I mean, when they came to us the idea, it was a softcore film for the whole um, album. And I thought that was a great idea, too. And when the idea first came to me, I guess, as far as I know, it was from a meeting at the label where Tiffany 
said that she had this idea, and then Pete was there, and it was all crazy, and he called me, he's like, you're not going to believe this. What do you think of this? <laughs> and I was like, hell yes, that's a great idea. I was, now what? <laughs> yeah, I was at that lunch, and I can back up that, that story. It's true. Stuff made of legends. Yeah. But, yeah, we were just sitting around brainstorming about how to launch the record, think outside the box, and do something different. Different, And Tiffany came up with the idea for the film, and and Pete was like, your manager was like, let me text the band. So we texted <laughs> you, and you wrote back, in 100%. <laughs> so, um, let's see. What was your initial reaction to the idea of the premise of the film? Because it's... It's it's got it's it's got some erotica in it. It's, right, it's different. Right. I think we first talked about it and in, in the word softcore came out, and I was like, well, maybe we can call it something else, like you know, make it more of a vintage erotica vibe, you know. And so I was I started watching, researching some classic vintage erotica. That was hard. So what were some of the uh... What were, what were some of the vintage erotica films that you watched? Actually, my biggest inspiration was um, um, Immoral Tales. Okay. And that was... Uh, Is it from the 70s? It was from the 70s, I think, late 60s, 70s. And it was just, it looks beautiful, and it's really tasteful, and strange, and dark. And so I started writing. We didn't have, like, the songs weren't written to be a story or anything, so I wanted to write a story, pull all the songs together so it could mean something, but not, but still be a little abstract once in a while. And then, so I did, and everyone loved it right off the bat, thank goodness. Well, what, <laughs> what blew me away is how quickly you put the script and the idea <laughs> together and basically delivered something in a couple of months. I mean, it's... It, I mean, at least that's how quickly it seemed to me. It just, the idea, it just seemed to pour out of you. And then all of a sudden we had the crew and the location. Um, tell us about the location because, you know, me watching the film, it had this sort of, uh, you know, it was a very romantic dreamscape, erotic film that reminded me of how Call Me By Your Name or a classic like swimming pool felt mm -hmm. and it looked like it was in France but where did you shoot the film and how did you find the house? Well the idea at first was to go to France <laughs> we have to do this in France yeah. but then the logistics of me not knowing anyone in France yeah. <laughs> made it kind of hard and um, and then we thought oh we have to do it in LA because that's where everyone lives but then we're like, but we live in Michigan, and it would be so nice to just be home and be here. And so we just researched spots and looked at a few, and as soon as we pulled in the driveway of this place, it was like, this has to be it. Yeah, it's, it's an incredible spot. Just in the middle of farm country, so you would never know that it's there. But like she said, as soon as you turn off this road and you go down this driveway, it's like a whole other world. Like, you could be in France, but you're in Michigan. It's, it's Battle Creek, Michigan, where Kellogg's is. Oh, random. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, the, uh, the landscape in it is unbelievable, the, the trees. And yeah. It's very lush. Um, so you also, not only did you come up with the script, the idea, you also co-directed it. Mm -hmm. And had you co-directed anything before? Because when I saw the film, I was like, well, it just looks so pro yeah. and so well done it looked like the film was done by like a seasoned veteran of <laughs> filmmaking <laughs> well i've done I've, I've shot and directed i think i counted to five in the valley below videos and then i i worked with this cinematographer chris johnson and we co-directed a couple more <clears throat> um the blood hands and then elephant which isn't out yet and he was also director of photography on this but Doing one music video is, it's not so, it's not so bad, it's just a few minutes, but shooting a whole feature film, once I started the project, I felt like I needed, I did need a seasoned veteran, so I have a friend, Marcos Efron, 
who I've, who I've worked with on music videos and other projects in LA. And I asked him if he wanted to co-direct this and help me with this. He basically taught me how to make a feature film in the process, <laughs> too. So it was him and I and then our other friend Chris as the cinematographer, and it was just a great team. We got along really well creatively and everything. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And there was a whole cast involved, but how, how big was the crew? Like, how many bodies did you have on set? I'd say it was probably about 20 or so. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Um, what was it like working with naked people and creating erotic scenes? Well, at first, it was I was a little nervous about it, especially when we were doing the casting. Because I was like, can I just ask these people to be naked in the casting? And I was a little nervous about it. And I was like, well, of course. You know, it's, this producer, this local producer, Lisa Enos, who we brought on, she's like, I was in a movie once playing an actress where I had to get naked in front of a producer. She's like, they'll be fine. So I was like, okay. So after like looking at naked people at castings the whole time, I kind of was softened to the idea. Oh, yeah. And then we just made sure on set everyone was very comfortable. There were no extra people around when we were shooting the nude scenes. So if someone showed up for casting, mm -hmm. like, how did it get to that point of like, okay, can you remove your your clothing? I mean, was it basically, awkward or was it? <laughs> basically, we gave them a heads up before they got there, so yeah. they were expecting it. And they were all just ready. They were like, okay, like, it was no big deal to them at all. So and it was not awkward. And how many people were in the room sort of making the decision when you're going through casting? Was there were three of us. Three. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. Um, you know, moving off from the film, you guys recorded a new song for the album um, called Rise. And how did that song come together and come about? And I love the song, by the way. It's unbelievable. Thanks. Um, We've had that one for a while, I think. I actually wrote the song in bed. Oh, just cool. really fast. I was, um, um, I don't know how or why. I think I was trying to just write a song. I was writing a song for, for someone else to sing, is what I was thinking. Oh, really? And um, it was for a specific artist. And when I finished it, I thought, Sam Smith needs to sing this. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, can we just, can we see if he'll sing this? And our manager was like, no, this is too good. You need to keep this. <laughs> yeah. I heard an early demo of it, and I was like, yeah, we got to figure out a way to get this <laughs> Yeah, I remember released. you liked it right away. And um, here's the video for Rise.
That was Rise the Video by In the Valley Below, which features clips from the film, The Pink Chateau. The new album and the movie, The Pink Chateau, will be available on April 26th. Vimeo will be the first place you can see the movie before it spreads to other video outlets. And now back to our original In the Valley Below podcast. Let's talk really quickly about this album, In the Valley Below, The Pink Chateau. Um, What can you tell us about this record? Any secrets? Oh, there's many, Lots of secrets. What is The Pink Chateau a reference to? Well, if you, well, if you, if you look at the artwork, no, no, you can keep it the, that way. <laughs> it. What would you say that that this is right here? A flower. If you're just listening to this, and you can't see Tiffany holding this beautiful album cover, it's white, and there's a sort of uh, painted with a, uh, a watercolor brush, a black flower, Flowery. palm trees, explosion thing. That's a great um, description. Yeah. Yeah. Just Google it. It's a vagina. It looks like a vagina. The pink chateau is a vagina. <laughs> it's really like, you know, our life is about, is dedicated to this music, like following our dreams, so. Right. We do write about that a lot because, I don't know. That's what we do. (laughs) Yeah, that's sort of the law we live by. I don't know. I think that's a really good law to live by. Um, I mean, you you guys live in Michigan. I grew up in Ohio. I feel like, I don't know if you notice this, but I feel like um, particularly in that part of the country, people don't always do that. You know, they they kind of get into situations in their lives where... um, they're forced into certain jobs or um, sort of stuck in certain places, and they don't yeah. have the opportunity to do that. Um, how do you feel like you got out of that sort of, um, well, what do you call it? I don't even know what you I, call it. I, I but know you mean. For me, I feel like people get, I don't know if it's necessarily stuck. I think it's a couple factors. I think one is that, they just don't think it's real. Like, I didn't think it was real, and my parents didn't. You know, I went, yeah. I went to school and, and got a normal college degree. But when you meet someone, I think that's how it happened. Like, I met a couple people who made a living, and I'm like, what? Yeah. Really? Yeah. And so, okay, that's something I can do. And then moving to L.A., you meet more people, and that becomes a real thing when most people don't even think it's a real thing that, that you can do. Right. And then yeah. another part is some people don't want to live like that. Where it's you're just, scary. It's it's scary, but yeah. some people just want security. Yeah. And yeah, I understand that too. Do you think that you are each other's muses? Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're the same person. <laughs> I know. It feels like it sometimes. Um, oh, that's a good question. I think I don't, I don't know if muse is the right word, but maybe. <laughs> <laughs> What's no, the... I, I, but I, I mean, like, no, when no, I, like, when I first met you, even till now, I'm just so in awe by your guitar playing and I am like, too. your sense of, <laughs> of tone and that it's just so inspiring to me that, you know, it makes me better. And so I, I don't know if that's necessarily, like, being a muse or inspiration or I'm not sure. I think so. I think so. Yeah. I think... It, it, and going back to what we were saying earlier, it depends on the song, because some songs are autobiographical, and then some are more storytelling. But yeah, definitely with the autobiographical <laughs> ones. <laughs> Whoop. The, yeah. Uh, yeah, then we're definitely kind of feeding off of our relationship and feelings for one another, I think. But sometimes you write a song about an ex, and you don't want to give away too many details because you don't want to, like, you know, <laughs> offend your... Right. <laughs> you're, you know. Somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> Which one of you do you think would be the most uncomfortable or if not offended is probably not the right word, but like, do you feel like 
that's a, a, <laughs> a, a sticky subject, or, or you're just like, we're married, we're over that. Like, who's by that now. song about? Yeah. Well, she wrote, if she wrote a song about like, oh, I, I missed the greatest love of my life, and <laughs> I regret it every day. Then I would, you know, I maybe would ask a question <laughs> that would be a or two. Problem, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that hasn't happened yet, so we'll see. <laughs> and you know, a little mystery is good in a relationship, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you wanted to talk a little bit about that, like, how do you feel? Do you think that being in a relationship and working together is more challenging or less challenging than not doing it together? Oh, it's. it's and I, so I ask this. For, uh, from the point of view of someone who works daily with yeah. 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 I think it's great. Yeah, we have the kind of relationship yeah. that, that works. I, I think some, obviously every relationship is different. Some people, it's great, and then they need that space, and then they, you know, but we are around each other pretty much all the time, right. and it works for us. We're, we're, we're good that way. He puts up with me, and yes, that's good. he's kind, <laughs> even when I'm bitchy. Yeah. yeah, you put I up with me too, so about... it, it works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so nice. I know, right? <laughs> That's the key. Scott is married to Tiffany, works with Tiffany at Bright Antenna Records, and is doing this whispery voiceover. So, talking more about muses, going back to that, do you have other muses or, like, inspirations for your work, um, other musicians or other artists that you mm. draw from a lot or are really inspired by? I think sometimes when we're writing a song, if we're stuck on something and we can't kind of like get in, get into the meat of it, a lot of times we'll throw something out like, um, what, what would David Bowie do here or something like that? Um, or question. Peter, Peter yeah. Gabriel or something. And, and it kind of, pushes your brain in a different direction mm -hmm. instead cool. of just trying to, because a lot of times you get into a rut creatively where you're just kind of in your zone and you're not really seeing everything. And so that's a good uh, way to trigger your creative impulses to say like, oh, what would somebody amazing do? And then <laughs> try to put yourself in their brain or their persona. Right. And then obviously it won't be what they would actually do. It's your interpretation <laughs> of them. Right. But it's a good way to kind of uh, shake things up a little bit. Yes. Or if a song, we write a song and it's catchy and, and we're wondering, is this so cheesy? And we're like, well, wait a minute. The, this Cure song is really cheesy and we love it. So what? What's what cheese? What kind of cheese is okay? Right. Everybody's got I like a little cheese. Yeah. Everybody's got a different level of cheese tolerance. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's yeah. not like Kraft American cheese. Right. It's right. fine. Mm -hmm. Velveeta, no, no. But you know, a really nice cheddar. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Do you think that um, you make music because you need to, or do you just want to? I, I need to. I don't know if it's a need or a want. It's just, I do. I'm not sure. I think I need to. Yeah. I, if, if you, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to imagine if I didn't. Do you know the difference between needs and wants? <laughs> uh, I'd say it What would... is the difference between need and want? Maybe it's the same thing. I often wonder about that. Hmm. Because if we want it that badly, maybe we need it. That could justify a lot of bad behavior. Yes, it could. <laughs> Actually, I think I've used that theory to justify a lot of bad behavior. If you want it bad enough, then it's a need. No, yeah. I remember when I first started writing songs, it would be in the car with my parents, and I would write a song during the instrumental intro of every song, and I, and I needed to. Like, hmm. I had this great melody, and I had to sing along to that. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> that you had, you, had like a a gift. you had a blank track there. Okay. But it was only, you know... Yeah, 12 seconds. Yeah. Go. Okay. So, um, these days, as we know, the music industry is a lot more difficult than it was 20 years ago. Um, and I think that it takes a lot more... Um, a, a lot of different things to, to get through it, to, to persevere. Um, what do you think are some of the traits that are most important for maybe artists starting out that um, the sort of don't give up attitude that you need? I think, no, you go first. I think that you just, you have to want to do it whether you're going to make money or not. And that's, yeah. that's it. And if you get lucky, you make money. <laughs> right. Yeah. But you do have to work hard. You have to be self-disciplined and you can't, you have to work hard. You have to put the work in, you know what I mean? Yes. I think 
Desperation is good. <laughs> that always works. But just don't let them smell it. Yeah. You have, <laughs> yeah, you have to want it more than anything else. Or, or you just have to not give up more than anything else. There's a certain amount of desperation in just hanging on to the idea of making it. Right. And then maybe it'll actually work if you although, can hang on long enough. Although, for us, you know, we, we, were, we, we both moved to L.A. separately to, like, you know, follow the dream. And we tried it for a little while, and then we became a couple, you know, and then I got pregnant. And that, then it was, you know, we weren't making a living, and at that point we were both working at, like, two restaurants, and we were having fun, though. And yeah, and then it became a different situation. Then it became a different yeah. situation. It's like, okay, you know what? I can, I've got other skills. And it's like, I'm ready to just let go of this, like, thing I was holding onto so hard. And it was the next day. Like, <laughs> I felt so good letting go of it. I'm like, I'm going to move on. The next day, we got an email from somebody who heard our song. So do you, do you look at a situation like that and say, this is fate, like the universe was saying to me, nope, we, we still need you here. Either that Doing or this. like the grip was too tight, you know, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. So what does success yeah. mean to you under those circumstances? Oh, well, just right now, like doing yeah, being able to make music. Being able to make music and not having to do it after work, you know, mm -hmm. basically. <laughs> yeah, we did that for a long time. And, uh, you know, you can still do it. Um, but yeah, that, that was always m my personal goal, just in my own brain, was yeah. I just, I just want to be able to do this. We just want right. to quit our jobs. We just yeah. want to quit our jobs. Yeah. I well, and I think that's the struggle for everybody in the music industry starting out now, and even people who are you know, have a record under their belt. It's just, yeah. It's yeah. like, how do you do this and make a living is yeah. just... Especially if you're in, you know, L.A. or New York or San mm -hmm. Francisco and you got to pay that rent and it's just, it's a hustle. It yeah, especially hustle. in the, the expensive cities to live in. Yeah. yeah. But it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah. But it's fun. You just can't, you know, if you if you need a house and a nice car and all those things, then... Maybe this isn't the career Maybe for you. Maybe it's not it, yeah. 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 There's <laughs> yeah. no job security in this business. <laughs> no. You gotta just, gotta go for it. And then if it works, it works. And if not, you figure it out. So you guys are gonna play a song for us. We are? Um, yes, we're gonna move all this stuff out of the way and watch a performance. So okay. what are you gonna play? What are we playing? We're gonna play Pink Chateau. Okay, Pink Chateau it Pink is. Pink Chateau is coming up. Magic. And this is the Pink Chateau. Down in the valley below We could drink champagne in the pink chateau 
shadow Simmer down, miss indigo Come with me to the pink shadow Down in the valley below We can drink champagne in the pink shadow So there are a lot of things that um, artists have to do these days that maybe 20 years ago they wouldn't have had to do um, and would have frowned upon, for instance, social media. How do you guys feel mm. about having to um, be a part of that? And is it fun ever or is it always like, oh, can you I know, say fuck? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's, that's interesting because it took a while to be comfortable with taking a selfie and posting it because you feel kind of douchey. You feel kind of douchey, but at the same time, like the you know, kid, like younger kids are totally okay with it. You know, people in high school and stuff. And right. it's if you, when I like first frowned upon it, I'm like, oh my gosh, I sound like in like in my grandma frowning <laughs> on TV or something. Right. You know what I mean? Yes. And so ah. times change and you just can't you can't be stuck in your old ways. Right. It's just you'll what's get wrong left with behind, it? right? You're if you're you... you're, a photo you're being a photographer and it's, it, you just have to be creative with that too. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I think there are ways to make it fun and creative and yeah. A, a, yeah. another way to express yourself. Yeah. And and it's another cool thing about it is on social media and now with all the digital age, you can be whoever you really are inside. Not just how people yeah. are going to judge you on what kind of clothes you can afford or what you look like. You can you can create yourself. Right. And I think that's kind of cool. I think that's cool too. It's valuable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I like that she enjoys doing it because <laughs> he doesn't do do any of it. Do it. <laughs> he doesn't do any of it. Yeah. It's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Is it because I don't allow you to, or just because? It's the perfect <laughs> <No>. combination. <laughs> so, are there any artists that you would love to meet? Oh, man. If you could meet yes, anyone, so who, many. who would you say it would be? Are we doing yeah, the one? dead or alive thing, or uh, just now? Let's say now? alive for okay, now. Okay. I'm not sure if it's because I want to meet them and talk to them, or I just want to be in their presence, is Patty Griffin. And she's my favorite. Um, Songwriter and her voice and yeah, yeah. Um, I would my first impulse would be Peter Gabriel just because I'm a huge fan and uh, he's an idol, so that would be my number one. But there's a lot. That's a long list if I really start right. going down. How about Dead? Well, unfortunately, Prince is now oh, in that list. I would love to hang out with Prince. Yeah. He was Play a big basketball, one. eat pancakes. Eat pancakes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that does sound fun. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Um, so many. Tom Do you think Patty. you would be nervous to meet Peter Gabriel or Patty Griffin? Yes. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We yeah, were talking first. We were talking about this earlier that sometimes fans will come up to you and they'll be super nervous, um, and. Do you think, feel like that makes you, I was saying that m makes me less nervous when I think about meeting one of my heroes because uh, I'm, right, I right, just right. think, why is this person nervous to meet me? Like, yeah, I'm just a person. I'm just a girl. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you think that has any effect on how you would approach one of your heroes? I think they should be nervous to meet me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I bite. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah, I would just try to remember that. Right. That, yeah. Yeah. That's that what they're I just, said. Like, they're if just that person. or meet Bono, like I'm just gonna be like, but maybe he'll think it's crazy that I'm nervous. Yeah. Bono, every, if you're watching. Bono, yeah. if you're watching. <laughs> I'm coming for you. <laughs> you just gotta remember that everybody poops. Exactly. And that kind of like That's evens it. out the yes. the playing field. It's true. <laughs> it's really true. That's great right now in my mind. Every, um, everybody. did you, Mono did you say 10 <laughs> minutes? You said 10 minutes. Okay. So, um, here's something that we're going to do, something fun that we're going to do. Mm. 
to end this conversation. Since you guys are married, we're going to play a little game where you each get a piece of paper and a pen, and I'm going to ask three questions that you are going to answer for your spouse. Okay. So, um, okay. and then we'll see who does a better job at Knowing. answering for their spouse. No yeah. cheating, no looking on each other's <clears throat> answers. Okay, first question. Where was your first kiss? Like si How city? specific should we yeah. be? <laughs> like, uh, like the location. Okay. Second question: What is your spouse's favorite flavor of ice cream? It's <laughs> <laughs> um, funny because I know his least favorite. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next, the last question is a little more complicated. Fill in the blank. My husband slash wife may be the world's best blank. But he, she is also the world's worst blank. Okay, it's a two part. <laughs> best, yes, worst. Best and worst. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 wait, let me think about this for a second. I can't even spell this right now. <laughs> okay. Okay, so where was your first kiss? Um, um, so, yeah, do we answer? Or, or or how? Well, I'm going to say. You're reading Jeff? Jeff says Austin, Texas. Yep. And Angie says John Nielsen? Nielsen's Kitchen. Which in is Austin, in Austin, Texas. Texas. <laughs> okay, so. Hi, John. Kitching, <laughs> really good. Um, favorite ice cream. Jeff says your favorite ice cream is butter pecan. That's right. Well, oh. actually, you should answer this. Oh, so oh, yeah, your, oh yeah. Sorry. Butter pecan. Yeah, butter pecan. Okay. Um, your favorite ice cream is. What would you say? Chocolate. I don't know, actually. No. Chocolate. It's not. Cookie. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is my favorite ice cream? Moose tracks. Moose tracks. I do love moose tracks. <laughs> yes. OK. She, know, she got it right. OK. So what do you think Jeff said was your you were best and worst at? He probably said um, I was best at cooking. Yes. And worst at doing the dishes? I was going to put that down. <laughs> I was so going to put that down. I threw, you a, I threw you a curveball. I'm pretty bad at tennis. <laughs> it's not Eddie that you're bad. Racket sport. I'm it's bad at It's not that you're bad at playing tennis. Oh, I'm it's bad. That you're the worst um, loser in the history oh. of sportsmanship. We heard that rumor <laughs> yesterday. I am. I am. It's embarrassing. Yeah. OK, so what do you think she said? Oh, the best and worst yeah, one? Yeah, what are you the best at? What are you the best at? I, I don't know. Um, loading the dishwasher? Pretty close. <laughs> Pretty much, yes. Dishwasher. Oh, yeah. That's what you said. As a um, washer of dishes. I do wash a lot of dishes. <laughs> what are you worst at? Oh, no. I got it mixed up. Because this is actually, he's two bests. Oh. How about that? What's another thing you're What's best at? What's another thing you're oh. great at, you're apparently? Great at. I'm, I don't know, I'm playing guitar? What are we, are we talking more household? No, no. I don't Just know. Just in the world. What are you really uh, good at that not many people are good at? Jeopardy? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> ding, 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 ding. I don't know why you you're guys good win things. a new honeymoon. <laughs> yeah. We're going to Hawaii. <laughs> He's very good at Jeopardy. No, I just like playing Jeopardy, that's all. That's good. <laughs> it's good to be good at Jeopardy. You might be on Jeopardy someday. That would trying. be awesome. He's trying. Really? Yes. Yeah. That so they have a, is so great. They have a, an online test you can take, so I'm, I'm working at that. it. I'm going to be on that. So this was super fun. Thank you guys so much for being here with us at this amazing Sweetwater to chat about life, music, art, and Jameson. And, and, Jameson. <laughs> um, and we hope everyone watching and listening enjoyed the conversation. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for listening to and watching Cocktails with Bright Antenna. Follow us on YouTube and your favorite podcast outlet. Be sure to check out our episode with Kyle Nicolades. He'll be talking about life and music, both with his band Beware of Darkness and his recent solo music, and how he has dealt with depression, the tough times he had in the early days of Beware of Darkness, and how he learned chord progressions from video games. Also, don't miss our podcast with Oakland's Second Line Vinyl. 
We discuss the state of music and the challenges of building a new record press in a manufacturing industry that has not evolved in decades. Finally, you'll definitely want to check out a very special podcast with our host and Bright Antenna Records chief executive super goddess, Tiffany DeBartolo. She wrote the text to a new graphic novel, Grace, the Jeff Buckley Story. Mayor Goubert, Jeff Buckley's mom, will be taking part in the discussion, and artists like Wayne Kramer from the MC5, Kyle Nicolades, and Patrick Spurgeon from Rogue Wave will be paying a musical tribute to Jeff and his music. Thanks again for listening, and let us know what you think in the comments or by emailing us at info at brightantenna.com.